Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I'm going to be talking to you about the shadow and a phenomenon that I call the projection screen effect. And I'm also going to be teaching you about how to use the projection screen effect in your shadow work practice. Alright, so in today's video it's going to be all about shadow work and the shadow and a phenomenon that I refer to as the projection screen effect. And at the end of the video I'm going to be sharing with you a simple practice for using the projection screen effect to help you integrate your shadow. But first, before we get into all of that, let me give you a quick definition of what the shadow is and what shadow work is. So the shadow is a term that was coined by Swiss psychologist Carl Jung to describe the unconscious parts of ourself. These are the parts of ourself that we've fragmented off from the rest of the personality and repressed away into the unconscious. And what shadow work is, is the process of becoming aware of those aspects that we've repressed and coming to reincorporate them or reintegrate them into the conscious personality. And the conscious personality is basically just your personality, the way that you think about yourself, who you call me or I. So with that definition out of the way, what is the projection screen effect? Well, what the projection screen effect is, is whenever we push something away and we repress it and we put it in the shadow, what ends up happening is that we go unconscious to it in ourself, but that that part of ourself gets projected out onto the external world on anything that has an element of uncertainty. And when we've repressed parts of ourself into the shadow, we can and often do project onto other people, groups of people, businesses, organizations, political and religious groups. Um, we can even project things onto our God images and onto the universe at large. Essentially, anywhere where we have an element of mystery and unknown, we can project into that unknown space. Any blank projection screen will do. And the projection screen effect tends to make us feel either really, really positively toward or really, really negatively toward the person, place, thing, or idea that we're projecting onto. For example, let's say that I have repressed part of myself that has to do with my personal sovereignty and my own sense of personal authority. And let's say that I'm always doubting myself, so I don't have any access to feeling very centered in my own perspective. So in that case, what I might do is I might actually start projecting my sense of authority out onto external authority figures. And it might cause me to look up to a particular authority figure and really idolize them and kind of hero worship them and start kind of listening to everything that they're saying without question. And on the flip side of that, I might even have a more negative reaction to external authority figures where I might have a natural tendency to be contrarian or rebellious even when they are espousing something that's actually in alignment with my values. Or let's say that as a teenager, I decided that I wanted to be a very serious person and that having fun and being lighthearted, oh, well, that was just really immature, childlike behavior. And so I pushed away those fun loving parts of myself. And now those elements are in the shadow and I've built this identity of being this super serious person. And now what I find is that when I see other people having fun and enjoying themselves, I have a tendency to feel this sense of disgust and judgment and aversion toward them like, oh, you know, they're not being productive, look how immature they are. Or I might even find myself having romantic feelings toward people who are more like carefree and fun loving. Or another example would be is let's say that at some point in time I decided that I was going to be a strong person and I was going to push away all weakness from myself. And so I'm saying I'm strong and I'm not weak. And so I've pushed elements of myself that I've labeled as weak into the shadow. Now, of course, when I've repressed away my weakness, it's like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. In fact, it's all baby and no bathwater because weakness, this idea, even if it has a negative label, can include things like emotional sensitivity, emotional intelligence, um, and just connection to the feminine side in general. And so now I've pushed away all of those elements of myself. And that way, it's the case that whenever I see somebody showing those qualities, I either have a tendency to judge them very harshly and very strongly, or I find myself magnetically, obsessively attracted to them in some kind of way, either hero worshiping them, idol worshiping them, you know, having intensely obsessive romantic feelings because they possess something that I feel like I need to integrate. Or to give another example of how this might come out toward 
whole groups of people is that I might push away certain elements of myself. Um, so let's say that I push away parts of myself that are more, uh, let's say, liberal minded. You know, so I push away anything that I associate with that. And then I start to see people who are like coalescing around like, you know, let's say liberalism as a kind of political uh, tendency. And so then I have like these really, really strong judgments toward liberals because I've pushed away those parts of myself and now I have this really strong aversion toward liberals now. Or the same thing could be said if like if I have conservative values that I've like pushed away and then I see conservative people espousing those things that can create these really really intense negative polarizations against that group or let's say for example that I have a tendency to want to know the right answer to things and I really want to get a clear sense that I know what's going on in the universe and that I understand things well but at some point in time I learned that it's not so good to be a know-it-all know and it's not so good to be really dogmatic about things and so I started to push away that tendency toward dogmatism within myself and with pushing away this dogmatism and putting it in the shadow there was these other parts of my personality that kind of came out and is trying to understand things it's always constantly questioning and always trying to learn but with a secret intention with the unconscious intention of coming to the right answer and finally understanding dogmatically once and for all what's absolutely going on with the universe. Now, of course, this is not possible because we as human beings are always in this space of mystery. And intellectually, let's say that I understand that. And so I have layers and layers of repression upon this dogmatism that I have. And then whenever I see, let's say, religious groups being very dogmatic, I have a very, very strong negative reaction toward the religious groups. And so that would also be an expression of the projection screen effect, is if you push something away in into the shadow deep enough, you start to put it out toward these other groups. Or let's say that I have a really strong tendency toward judgment, but I also feel like I shouldn't be judgmental. And so I judge myself for my judgment. And so to the point where I've pushed away my judgment, I can't even see it. And then I project this judgment out onto my God image. And I perceive that there's this divine judge that I'm like idolizing as the absolute judge of all things. But then I'm also trying to hide from the judgment. I'm terrified and I feel like negative and maybe I even feel a little bit like rebellious against it. Like I don't wanna be surveyed and judged all the time. But in reality, this is just parts of myself that I'm projecting onto the God image. Or let's say that I'm a man who really, really wants to be masculine and wants to get rid of all the feminine within myself because I think that that's what will make me more attractive to women. And so I try to polarize over into the masculine and I push away everything within myself that I consider to be feminine. And now it creates this really, really strong polarization reaction when I'm around women that I'm attracted to where I either put her up on a pedestal and she's the total arbiter of my worth and it's like this goddess worship thing or there's this really intense bitterness and dislike and, and hatred. So it's this obsessively liking and obsessively disliking. And the same would also be true of like, let's say if I'm a woman that's like really, really identifying with the feminine and trying to push away all the masculine elements of myself and trying to become the most feminine as possible. And what would happen is I'd push away my masculine side and then I would start projecting that out onto all men. And there would be this intense dislike, but also this intense obsession that's there as well. Or let's say that I have qualities that I really don't like and I dislike them to the point where I go unconscious to these qualities. And maybe I'm deeming myself as, uh, let's say lazy or something like this. And so I push this away and I push away my feelings that I'm lazy. And now I start kind of pointing out other people like that person's lazy or that person's lazy. Well, if I'm doing that individually, I can also do this collectively. And so maybe I push away these parts of myself and now I start projecting out onto whole groups of people. It's like, oh yeah, this particular race of people, they're super lazy or immigrants are super lazy. So this would be also an example of how the projection screen effect would work. Yeah, so those are all examples of how we can project out onto other people when this projection screen effect is impacted. So whenever we feel really, really positively or really, really negatively toward another person, place, 
thing or idea or group of people or entity, we can be pretty sure that the projection screen effect is in effect. And the reason why we get these really polarized positive feelings and really polarized negative feelings is because the positive feelings reflect our desire to integrate with what we are projecting onto the other person, place, thing, idea, entity, or group. And our negative feelings reflect our current state of repression and resistance against the thing that we are projecting onto, whether it be the person, the place, the thing, the entity, the idea, or the group. And if anybody is ever treating you negatively, you can guarantee that they're just treating you in the same way that they treat the shadow aspect that they've repressed away, that you represent to them. Or if there's somebody is putting you up on a pedestal and hero worshiping you and idolizing you and obsessing about you in a positive way, it's the same kind of thing. It's you represent something to them that they want to integrate within themselves. Only they're mistakenly trying to do so by getting relationship to you. So in a moment, I'm gonna get into some problems that can arise as a result of the projection screen effect. But first, I wanted to talk about something that I'm very excited about. So I'm happy to announce that my husband, Richard Kodai, came out with a movie called Room Zero. Um, basically, he wrote the movie, he directed it, um, he produced it, and then he actually got distribution for it through a distributor called Gravitas Ventures. And right now, it's in its pre-order period. So from today until March 18th or 19th, you can pre-order the movie. And so I want to get that information out in front of as many people as possible because we want to give him the best possible chances of ranking on Apple TV. And so if he gets in the, the top 10 for Apple TV, it could open new doors for him and give him more opportunities to you know, get funding for future projects and, and things like this. And so as his wife, of course, I want to give his movie the best possible chance of succeeding. So I have an opportunity that I wanted to share with you real quick. And so between now and March 18th or 19th, it's uncertain as to which one it is. Um, but between now and then, I'm gonna be offering um, basically a special where you can get a complimentary coaching session with me, a 30 minute coaching session, for ordering the um, ordering the movie Room Zero on Apple TV or iTunes. And so what you would have to do is you would just go to iTunes or Apple TV, and I'll, I'll link this down below in the comments and in the description, and you would order that, and you can just send the receipts um, to me at the diamondnetchannel at gmail.com, and then we can um, arrange to meet for a session. And so this is just sort of my way of kind of like getting his movie out there more, giving it the best possible chances to succeed. So if you would like a complimentary half an hour coaching session with me and a really awesome movie, then go ahead and click the link down below in the description. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can also email me at the diamond net channel at gmail.com. All right, so let's get into some of the problems that can arise from the projection screen effect. So the first issue that I'll talk about is that we can end up in unhelpful repeating patterns and end up repeating certain traumas that we've experienced or getting into similar relationship type of situations as a result of our projections out onto the external world. So an important thing to keep in mind is that there is a phenomenon that I call looping that happens with shadow aspects. And I actually made an entire video about that. It's called looping. And so you can check that out like by looking back in my videos if you want to learn more about that. And what looping is, is where an aspect is repressed at a particular stage of development and dealing with particular traumas and particular unmet needs. And that aspect has a particular viewpoint that's like unique to that time period that it was pressed at. And so what happens is that this um, aspect becomes like a broken record where it keeps going around and around and around, going through the same patterns again and again, hoping for a different result. And what it does from in the shadow is that it's constantly stuck in that moment where just like a skipping CD or a broken record, it keeps repeating itself. And so what ends up happening is that this aspect projects out onto the external world using the projection screen effect to get the conscious personality to re-engage with past traumas or re-engage with old patterns in hopes of getting a different result and actually closing the loop and getting past that point on the skipping CD or the broken record. And this is why Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. 
So an example of this would be, let's say that there's a person that has like really negative feelings toward their dad, for example. And so they have basically polarized into an identity that's sort of getting away from being like their dad. So I'm like this, but I'm not like my dad. And so the parts of themselves that they're labeling as like their dad get pushed into the shadow. And what ends up happening is that that person, you know, maybe meets somebody that has some of those qualities that they've disowned within themselves to avoid being like their dad. And now they're getting back into some kind of relationship with that other person externally in hopes of one, closing the loop with their dad, trying to get a different result from their dad because now they're projecting their father onto that person. But really they're projecting the parts of themselves that they've, re they've labeled as being like their father onto that person. And so internally, they're having this repeat pattern where the conscious personality is orienting to these parts of themselves that they, they've labeled as being like their dad in a way where that part gets repressed. But externally, there's this attraction to somebody else externally where there's kind of like a looking up to that person, wanting to get close to that person, wanting to close the loop. And let's say that this person goes through this pattern again and again and again, where they keep getting attracted to partners that have similar qualities to their dad or really similar qualities to the ones that they've repressed because of the situation with their dad. Or let's say that this person ends up in situations where they end up in workplaces interacting with like authority figures that are like their dad and there's a really negative dynamic there as well and so it's that same repeating pattern that's happening as a result of what's been rejected and repressed in oneself as a result of some earlier situation there can also be a tendency that I call relationship mirages. And so relationship mirages happen when we've repressed certain parts of ourself into the shadow, we're projecting that out onto another person that we don't know very well, and we're looking at that person, we're going, oh, that's the person that's going to save me. That's the, that's the person who's the one, that's the person I wanna be in a relationship with. And then we get into a relationship with that person, and now they're no longer a blank projection screen we start to fill it in with all the details of them. We get to know that person as, as a real person and not just as an idea. But now we can't project our shadow onto them. And so we lose that romantic spark for them. We, we lose that passion that comes from the projection screen effect. And now we start to look towards somebody else who is a blank projection screen. And then we start going, oh, well, that's the person who's gonna save me. That's the person who's the one. That's the person I need to integrate with. And then maybe we get out of a relationship with the first person, we go with the second person, and now it's like, oh, we're getting to know that person and now they're no longer a blank projection screen, and now we do it again and again and again and again. And so I call this relationship mirages because the idea of a mirage in the desert it's like we see maybe a pool of water, you know, far away and we get there and we're like, oh, the water is going to be here. And then we go and it's all just more sand. And then we look over to the side and we go, no, the water is over here. And then we go there and then there's just more sand. And in this metaphor, what the water really is, is our need to integrate parts of ourself. So if we're looking outside for that sense of integration, we can end up in these kind of repeat dynamics like this. But what we really have to do is we have to look inside of ourselves to integrate those parts of ourselves. But it's this projection screen effect that make us feel like we have to do our internal work in the external world, where we need to get into a relationship with that person, or we need to win the fight with this person, or we need to get into this kind of drama over here with this person. And we end up shadow boxing in, in this external world, what we need to deal with on the internal world. We can also have more macrocosmic issues that come about as a result of the projection screen effect. So with these macrocosmic issues, it's basically where we have lots of inner turmoil as individuals and then our collective inner turmoil or the inner turmoil of particularly powerful people get amplified out onto the world stage. And so what you'll find is that most macrocosmic issues that human beings are dealing with are actually amplifications of the inner turmoil of the human psyche. And so with these more macrocosmic expressions of the projection screen effect, we can end up with negative polarizations, things like wars and genocides and political and religious persecution and witch burnings and most conspiracy theories. And with the positive polarizations of the projection screen effect, we can end up with things like idolization, hero worship, uh, cultish behavior, 
um, overt supplication to authority figures and this kind of idea of just following orders. So with all of that being said, how can we use the projection screen effect to our benefit in our shadow work practice? Well, here's what you would do. So first you would want to look at where your positive polarizations are, whatever your positive projections are. And you can find these by seeing the people that you tend to really look up to. Um, let's say if there's a particular type of person that you tend to be attracted to, and if there's certain common qualities that are there or you know anybody that you have a tendency to look up and, and look up to and kind of put on a pedestal and this could be toward individual people groups of people it could be towards certain organizations or certain cliques or certain subcultures or even onto your god image or onto the universe at large and i would do this in a journal so i would write down a particular person or group or entity that you have very positive feelings towards so this can be things like you could have the whole hero worship um, kind of like just putting up on a pedestal having crushes on having attractions to or even having envy toward or if you notice you have a tendency to listen to that person over your own internal compass that can be a good sign that this is someone you have a positive polarization toward then what you want to do is you want to list down all of the qualities that you perceive that they have, especially the ones that you feel very positively about. And you want to say, what qualities of those do you have in yourself? Then you also want to ask yourself in what ways you feel cut off from those qualities and why you feel cut off from those qualities. And then in your day-to-day -day life, you want to start to pay attention to expressing more of those wanted qualities, more of those qualities that you look up to in your day-to-day -day life. Now you might run into resistances to ones where you feel like, oh no, I can't do that or I can't access that, but you really want to be able to come to step into those parts of yourself and to really express those externally. And you can repeat this with every person, group, or entity that you're projecting the positive side of the projection screen effect onto. Then you can move over to the more negative polarizations of the projection screen effect. And so thinking about a person, an entity, or a group that you feel very, very negatively toward, or it can even be an idea that you feel very negatively toward. And so that's anyone or anything that you feel like hatred or anger or annoyance toward or anyone that you have judgments and aversions to. And then just like the last time, go ahead and list out whichever qualities they have. You know, so you can list out any qualities that you feel are relevant to this uh, person, place, thing, idea, group, or entity that you're feeling negatively toward. And then of those qualities that you've listed down, you wanna think about what are some positive reframes for those qualities? What is the good within the bad? So for example, if I have a strong judgment towards someone for be, wanting to be the center of attention all the time, for example, I might be able to positively reframe that as somebody who's outgoing or gregarious, you know, a more positive connotation for those behaviors. And what you'll want to keep in mind here is that even if we have a very negative association toward those qualities, or we would maybe even look at something like, let's say, if somebody is being, um, let's say, a weak or something like that, we would say, okay, of course there's nothing good about weak weakness but we can look at okay well weakness might itself not be a positive expression but what's the more positive expression of that it could be something more like vulnerability so find the positive reframe for all of these qualities and then you'll want to ask yourself relative to any of the qualities that you wrote down as well as the positive reframes of those qualities if there's any way that you notice these qualities in yourself and you'll want to be very very honest with yourself while you're doing this sometimes when we have a strong judgment or negative feeling towards someone or something we don't want to see those qualities in ourselves, and we might resist them very strongly and then just like the last time what we did with the more positive polarizations is you want to take these positively reframed negative qualities and you want to practice expressing the positive reframe of those qualities in your day-to-day -day life so that you can incorporate more of them in your day-to-day -day life so for example if I really judge somebody because they're super aggressive the positive reframe 
of aggression might be something like assertiveness. And so I can go around and I can start to practice stepping more into a sense of assertiveness. Anyway, so that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, go ahead, give me a like down below. Also, if you want to check out more videos on the shadow, I have my shadow work playlist right here, you know, and I recommend just check those out and I think you'll really enjoy them. Anyway, keep becoming more you. Thank you.